Welcome back to Taiwan Outlook. Gentlemen, we've been talking about China's strategies to divide and defeat other countries, in pressuring China to improve its human rights. So, you know, NGOs, human rights activists, and countries should unite together and trying to have joint efforts to force China. And Taiwan should be part of this process. What do you think about the role of Taiwan in, you know, pressing China to improve its human rights? Dr. Hensley. I don't know uh, about pressing, but I think that uh, Taiwan's most important role is as a model. Mm -hmm. And I think that Taiwan has frightened the development of the Chinese, or sorry, the Taiwan government and the governmental system, I think, has frightened the Beijing tyrants more than almost any other phenomenon because they have tried to peddle this nonsense for years about the fact that Asian values are That's different right. than Western values and this is really what the Chinese people want. Westerners mm -hmm. may want democracy, but Chinese people just want Jiang Zemin to. <laughs> to to tell them what to do, or mm -hmm. Hu Jintao, uh, because that's an Asian value. Yeah. And they constantly uh, put forward this theory that democracy can't work in a Chinese cultural Sorry. context. Mm -hmm. Well, here is Taiwan, uh, it's every bit as Chinese culturally as the mainland, and it has a working democracy. Mm -hmm. And I saw this, uh, the effect that Taiwan has very vividly when I was living in Shanghai mm -hmm. at the time that Chen Shui-bian was elected. And for the week before the election, the week leading up to it, I was mm -hmm. saying to my daughter over and over again, well, if Chen Shui-bian wins this election, Jiang Zemin won't be able to sleep. He won't be able to sleep that night. Mm -hmm. And I got home and uh, uh, the night of the election, the returns were in very, very early. And mm -hmm. uh, I came home to, uh, uh, to see them. And uh, there was the news that Chen Shui-bian had, uh, had been elected. And my daughter went down to walk the dog. And uh, she had, uh, when she went out, the Bao An, the security guard, came walking over to her. And he said, well, Jiang Zemin won't be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that was how quickly the news uh, uh, had you know, come across to the mainland, and mm -hmm. people were watching it on TV. Yeah. And I think uh, it, it was a it was a very um, frightening experience. Mm. This is not you are from mainland China, and mm -hmm. and how do you think that the Chinese people watching? How do they see a democracy in Taiwan? Well, the uh, the biggest thing the uh, I I wish to echo uh, what Clive just mentioned, but the biggest thing that for 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 the for Beijing is the concern is that. They don't want the, the, the public in mainland China to learn about what is truly going on in, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. The propaganda is saying that in Taiwan it's a fake democracy and it's not, there's no media you know, uh, uh, freedom. Of course, you know, the facts tell otherwise. Mm -hmm. And what Beijing has put out is the one country, two system. Yeah. And I know that uh, this, this system is, is, is being uh, applied to Hong Kong and uh, Macau, supposedly. And they are trying to promote this uh, package to Taiwan. As a mainland Chinese, my concern you know, from the mainland perspective uh, uh, is that this one country, two system is an insult to 1.3 billion people mm. in China. Why? Well. The people in Hong Kong and, and Macau and Taiwan, why, why the heck they should enjoy greater freedom? Yeah. Whereas we, growing up under the superior socialist system, should enjoy less freedom mm -hmm. and become second class citizens. Yeah. And so the, uh, the idea of the one country, two system is, uh, is, uh, you know, is, uh, is really, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, yeah. There's no greater insult to, yeah. the, to, to the intelligence of the 1.3 billion people. Mm -hmm. You know, why the heck we should, you know, uh, should not have the freedom of movement? Why should we, you know, cannot talk freely? Why cannot we travel overseas? Mm -hmm. Why cannot we have, uh, you know, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the possibility to elect our own officials mm -hmm. to power, to the office? So this one country, two system, it doesn't even, you know, uh, uh, sell within the, uh, the people in mainland China and what you know, uh, and who the heck will believe this? Uh, they will implement in mm -hmm. you know, one country two system. In Hong Kong, we're seeing that the media is uh, kowtowing to Beijing already, mm -hmm. and they're conducting self censorship. 
and the universities are already, you know, uh, is uh, 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 concerned with you know, any uh, content mm -hmm. that is being critical or even uh, being choosing to reflect the Tiananmen massacre in their textbook. So this is a, a very, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, a propaganda scheme that it, that will, you know, uh, it's very hard to sell and. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I wish to, you know, since I'm here in Taiwan, uh, is to uh, it's a just suggestion, you know, I guess, is that the people here should value your freedom, yeah. and you should treasure, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, you know the opportunities you have. Uh, you know, I uh, I practice Falun Gong, and I cannot even go back to mainland China. And uh, even though uh, the government of of China recognized the health benefits, they published a health report about you know the how beneficial the, the meditation is good to health. Mm -hmm. This is from the Chinese Sports Commission mm -hmm. and from the government source. And yet the, the people who follow the meditation, the Chinese own tradition are being sent to labor camps and jail and the organs being taken out. Whereas here, uh, once I landed in the Taipei airport, you know, I, I feel no fear. There's yeah. no uh, you know, I, I see all the press, you know, uh, uh, reporting all different things, and you have uh, people travel and walk freely here. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that may be taken for granted for the people here. Right. But it is, <laughs> it's not a given right mm -hmm. in, in mainland China. Right. So there's a sharp contrast. The very existence of a democracy and freedom in Taiwan is a threat, like Clive said, you know, mm -hmm. to, to the regime in China. But one challenge that people in Taiwan are facing right now is this kind of uh, uh, reverse effect of democracy. In other words, uh, business people, you know, in China, you know, from Taiwan, they dare not to challenge the governments in Beijing. And even when they come back to Taiwan, they don't want to criticize Beijing because they are having a fear that that could implicate them some way when they go back to China. How can we overcome that kind of challenges? I, I think that um, I look at what we do in in um, my country. Mm -hmm. I don't mean that my country is the model for the world. I'm only saying that uh, everybody has to work within their own countries. Yeah. And I think that the activities we engage in to expose the truth mm -hmm. about uh, Beijing rather than the romantic image that these are kind of cuddly communists unli yeah. unlike the Soviet communists, they're little koala bear communists. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the activities we are involved in to expose that sort of thing can produce results through our own governments because we, we can elect governments in our own countries that are responsive to these kinds of issues and aren't selling out to an essentially fascist regime. Mm -hmm. And I think in particular, uh, we can make it plain to our own citizens, and this will result in pressure, mm -hmm. that we are in very grave danger right now of going through the same cycle we did in the 1930s. Because we're not only uh, succumbing to the charm offensive and, and the soft power of China uh, in having a, a benevolent image of, uh, of China. But we, in fact, are arming a very dangerous country, just as we did with Germany. That's right. IBM went into Germany and provided the punch card system for Hitler to organize the, the final solution for the Jews. Mm -hmm. And virtually every... Uh, one of the later allied powers in the Second World War, the corporations from all those co countries sold Hitler all the material that he needed to build up this war machine. And when it turned out badly, they said, well, it's all right, we've got a whole generation of young men we can send over there to die to save the situation for us. Um, it, and, you know, Er Ping mentioned a little while ago, Yahoo, Google. Microsoft, uh, Google, all of these high-tech companies have mm -hmm. provided almost everything they have to China. Mm -hmm. They've made big profits in the short term, but in the long term, these things have had military applications. That's right. And uh, we're told now that China has the technological capacity to shut down all the American satellites in space yeah. 
and that if there, if there were an invasion of Taiwan, I don't want to frighten anybody in Taiwan, but uh, we're told that if the Americans send a fleet here, that the Chinese can shut down all the communications, the intership communications. Yeah. And those are all Western, th American and British and Canadian corporations that have sold that technology. Apparently, we uh, yeah. will continue to pay more attention to the rights of China and also the abuse of human rights in China. And thank you, gentlemen, for coming to our program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Taiwan Outlook, and see you next week. Thank you.